This is uh, in this chapter a reminder, a couple of things we talked about sort of the Bronsted Lowry definition of asses and bases. Um, And when we talk about a bronsted Lowry definition, an acid is a proton donor. So obviously that is something that will give away an H. And as we talk about, not just the hydrogen, but the plus does make an effect on the overall charge. So that is something that you need to keep in mind as we do it. A base is something that will accept an H plus. And the result of that is we do get uh, things that are related to each other on opposite sides of the arrow. And we get things known as the conjugate acid and the conjugate base. And sort of the relationship of these things is the acid on one side, its partner on the other side is the conjugate base, while the base on one side, its partner on the other side is the conjugate acid. <clears throat> as it goes between those two. And remember that these two things, the only two things that are, can, are the only thing that can be the difference between these two guys is just one H plus difference. So that is the importance. Now, in addition, we started talking about KW, which is the H plus concentration times the OH minus concentration and that equals one times 10 to the minus 14. We could use this to figure out whether or not a solution is acidic, basic, or neutral. It's pretty much the same calculation, regardless of which one you're doing. One times 10 to the minus 14 divided by the OH minus concentration, the OH minus concentration, one times 10 to the minus 14 divided by the H plus concentration. So again, here we can compare the H plus concentration to the OH minus concentration. And if the H plus concentration is larger, it will be acidic. If the H plus concentration is less than the OH minus concentration, it will be basic. And if they are equal to each other, then it will be neutral. Remember that uh, the H plus concentration and the H3O plus, they are the same thing. So you could change them out for any of these things. Also, as the H plus concentration increases, the OH minus concentration decreases and vice versa. H plus concentration decreases, OH minus concentration increases. So, um, there's sort of that opposite relationship as one goes up, the other one goes down. We also talked about the pH scale. And the pH scale goes from zero to seven to 14. Less than seven is acidic. Greater than seven there is basic. And seven there is neutral. As you go from seven towards zero, that is more acidic. As you go from seven to 14, it is more basic in that case. To calculate the pH, uh, we take minus the log of the H plus concentration. So as we talked about last time, if you have a display calculator, you would put that in exactly the way it's written, minus the log or negative the log of the H plus concentration. If you have a non-display calculator, you would go the other way. Um, <clears throat> Any questions on any of those stuff that we sort of covered last time there? I had a quick question about that. Yeah. Um, while I was doing some of the calculations, I just wanted to make sure when I'm moving the decimal um, after completing, putting in the calculator, um, it's however many decimal places I move it to get to the first whole number. Are you asking about the significant figures in like your pH? Is that what you're asking? Uh, not the significant for the exponent. like. Um, so like if there's like four zeros in front of, and then 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 the number. Like, uh, yeah. So uh, if if you have a number just in decimal form, is that what you're asking? Like that? yeah, if it's like zero point zero zero four something. Okay. It's however many decimal places you have to move it to get to the first number, correct? Uh, if you wanted to convert it into scientific notation, if that's what you're asking. Yeah. So it go one, two, three, and four places. So this would be four point eight times 10 to the minus four, right? 
and that would be it converted into a scientific notation. And if you were putting this into your calculator, you would want to use your exponent button. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure I kept getting confused on that one. Thank you. You're welcome. And in terms of sig figs on the pH, like we talked about as well, the sig figs, um, the number of decimal places in your pH is equal to the number of sig figs in your uh, calculation, or I'm sorry, in your concentration value. Uh, so for example, this would have two significant figures, either way you wrote it, which means when you calculate the pH on this guy, you should take it to two decimal places. They might not be zero, obviously, but to two decimal places is where you should take that. All right, uh, so uh, why don't we try this is where we left off. So take a moment here. We wanna calculate the pH of each of these solutions. Let's take a couple of minutes here and see what you come up with. Look at the uh, pH here. So we know obviously uh, the pH is equal to minus the log of the H plus concentration. And since they did give us the H plus concentration, we pretty much just need to put it in there. So that's gonna be minus the log of uh, 2.1 times 10 to the minus five. And we will end up uh, with 4.68 as our pH. This, by the way, is less than seven, which means this would be acidic. Here we have two significant figures, gives us two decimal places on the pH. Any questions on that particular calculation there? All right, so next one, we also want the pH. So the pH in this case, again, going to be minus the log of our H plus concentration. Hopefully you realize when you look at this though, this is not the H plus concentration, but this is the OH minus concentration. So you cannot put it directly into here because that will not give you the pH actually. So you do need to use uh, KW at this point, which was that H plus concentration times OH minus concentration, and that equals a constant value of one times 10 to minus 14. Solving for the H plus concentration will give us one times 10 to the minus 14 divided by the, uh, the OH minus concentration, which was 5.9 times 10 to the minus eight. Remember, we wanna put exponent buttons here. So one exponent button, negative button, and 14 divided by 5.9 exponent button, negative button, and eight. That is going to give us an H plus concentration of 1.7 times 10 to the minus seven molar. That is now the H plus concentration, which allows us to go into here. 1.7 times 10 to the minus seven, taking minus the log of that 1.7 to the minus seven gives us a pH of 6.77 in this case. And this would be slightly acidic as it's just below seven. Question on that calculation there. Now, if you kind of just kind of put it into this equation minus the log and you did do the 5.9 times 10 to the minus eight and you got a value of <clears throat> 7 7.7 uh what we got there 7.77 i think right actually no let me put the number in correctly here log of 5.9 to the minus eight try that again 7.23 and if you thought this was a pH, this would be incorrect because you are not using the H plus, but you are using the OH minus. And although that does not give you the pH value, it does give you something known as the pOH value. And pOH value is calculated similar to the pH uh, value, except that it uses OH in the name, while pH uses H in the name. And if you happen, you know which one to use based on the name, really, 
Uh, so pOH means you need to use the OH minus concentration. pH means you need the H plus concentration. So actually in the name kind of tells you which one that you should be using. Now, all would not be lost if you did this because as we will see shortly, and I think we might even talked about it last time, there is a relationship between pH and pOH, which means if you add them together, they equal 14, like the pH scale. That means that if you calculate the pOH, you can then take 14 minus the pOH, which would get you 14 minus 7.23, which would get you to our 6.77 pH that we had below. So there's actually, you know, a way you could use this number to get to the pH. And the benefit of this, as you can see, is you don't necessarily have to use KW at all, and it will get you to the pH. So that's a very important thing. Sometimes people just get these numbers, they throw it into that log, and they always think it's the pH. But again, that's really how you recognize it. If you're using the OH minus concentration, and you do that, you're getting the pOH. If you're using the H plus or H3O plus concentration, you're getting the pH. And they are different, these two numbers, in terms of what they mean. One measures how much OH minus is in the solution. One measures how much H plus is in the solution. Any questions on that there? So that's a nice little calculation where, you know, you can sort of bypass using KW and kind of get yourself to the pH, which is usually what you're kind of interested in in most cases. Any questions on that calculation there? So the pH and the log scale, it does change by a power of 10 for every one pH unit it moves. So if it moves from like a pH of three to four, we move like a power of 10 unit and so forth here. So even though it doesn't make me seem like it's moving a lot or changing a lot when you just kind of move the pH by like a value of one up or down, it is changing by pretty much a magnitude of power of 10 up or down, depending on which way you go. And as we talked about before, the pH actually goes down as the H plus concentration goes up. And that's because as the H plus concentration goes up, the AOH minus concentration goes down because again, they run opposite of each other and vice versa, pH will go up as the H plus concentration goes down and the OH minus concentration goes up. Remember really the H plus is like your acid part and the OH minus is like your base part. So if we have a lot more acid, H plus is free in the solution, the pH will go down closer towards zero. If we have a lot more of the OH minus in solution, that means there's a lot more base guys floating around the pH will go up towards 14 in that direction. Not necessarily 14, but heading towards that direction from seven. Any questions on that there? So how do we measure pH? Well, there's a couple of different ways you can measure pH. Uh, two kind of common ways is to use a pH meter. It's basically an electrode, you put it in there and basically it measures how much free H plus is moving around. You calibrate it so it knows it gives it like a voltage basically and it gives you a nice reading, digital reading of what the pH of that solution is. Another common way is to use pH paper. And that's what this is. Basically, you dip it into the solution, change it some colors, and you know, you try to match it up the different colors and see where it is. Like, hey, it matches here. It's a pH of three or something like that. If you ever uh, tested water like in a pool or something they sometimes sell those like little ph sort of strips and stuff like that and you know, kind of measure it up and you can kind of figure it out uh, we also talked about i think earlier on that sometimes litmus paper is used and that is not used to measure ph so you can't really measure ph in this with this but you can determine if it's acidic or basic and typically if your litmus paper turns red it's acidic. If your litmus paper turns blue, it's basic. Again, not really a measure of pH, but it will give you an idea of whether or not it's acidic or basic. Here's a pH scale as we talked about. Again, seven here, which is pure water. Some people are surprised. Actual kind of tap water sometimes is like in this range uh, because it picks up CO2 from the atmosphere with some water. 
and make some carbonic acid. Carbonic acid generates a little bit more H plus and it kind of brings the water down. So especially if the uh, water has been sitting out a while, not really filtered really well, and it picks up a lot of carbon dioxide from the air, you could actually find a pretty acidic actually water. Um, if you want to fix that, you boil it, you get rid of the CO2 and it brings sort of it back up to seven. But we do see up here, sodium hydroxide strong base, pH of 14, uh, hydrochloric acid down towards obviously our more acidic vinegar, which is acetic acid, is a acid lemon juice. A lot of cleaners, as we talked about, are also very basic as well. Now we sort of uh, jumped the gun a little bit here and talked about this a second ago, but there is a very similar scale uh, to pH, which is the pOH. And as I mentioned before, in the name, it tells you what you need. pOH, again, means that you need the OH minus concentration. That in combination with our pH equation, again, can be very helpful because as I mentioned just a second ago, if you take the pH plus that pOH, it does equal 14, uh, which means you can actually perhaps calculate the pH even if you're given the OH minus concentration without having necessary to use KW. You could still use KW like we did in that previous problem. You can see they both come out the same. Uh, so that's a, some very good sort of calc, uh, formulas to remember here. This guy here, this guy here. By the way, the pOH scale runs opposite of the pH scale. And what that means is when you're trying to determine whether or not something is acidic, basic, or neutral, you should always look at the pH. Because that is the scale that most people have in their head. If you look at the pOH scale, it actually runs opposite. So if you have a pH that is going from 0 to 7 to 14, this is acidic and this is basic. But if this was the pOH on the same sort of scale, this would be basic and this would be acidic. And since most people don't remember this scale, you shouldn't think about it always look at the pH scale for being acidic, basic, or neutral. It cannot be both of those things. And this is very commonly when people will give that answer, oh, they'll go, hey, this guy is like above seven. So it's basic. And then they'll go, oh, this guy's below seven. It's acidic and go, cool. The solution is both acidic and basic. It cannot be both. So if you're asked that question, only one answer, either it's acidic, basic, or neutral, the same solution cannot be everybody together in that situation. So this brings us to some important equations that we've been seeing. Our KW is one option to solve some of these problems. And again, that one times 10 to minus 14 is a constant number. Our pH equation, if you have the H plus, our pOH, if you have the OH minus concentration, our pH plus the pOH equals 14, allows you to kind of go from one to the next. In addition, there's a couple other important calculations here we want to add to it. If we have the pH, again, if you have the pH in the name, it tells you that pretty much from that, you could actually calculate the H plus concentration directly from the pH value. And you do that by taking the inverse log of the minus pH. When you hit the inverse log on your calculator, it typically will pop up a 10 and a caret and then negative pH. That is how a lot of people have been doing scientific notation up to this point. And you're going to be in trouble if you're still doing that on most people's calculators to get to the inverse log. There's like a second button top left corner. There's like a shift button in the top left corner. And then you have your log button where it's like 10 to the X above it. That is how you do the inverse log. You hit that, you hit that. And if you have a display calculator, it'll probably pop that up on the screen. And that's how you do the inverse log. Now, if you have the pOH concentration or value given to you from the name, we could actually get the OH minus concentration directly from that. Same exact calculation, the inverse log of the minus pH. Again, that's a 10 and a caret minus pOH. 
And just like we talked about before, if you have a display calculator, you punch all these things in exactly how the formula is written. If you have a non-display calculator, you need to do all these calculations backwards. So if you have the non-display calculator and you're going to do this inverse log, you would start with the number, hit the negative button, and then hit shift log. If you have a display calculator, you hit shift log and then negative MPH. So keep that in mind as we talked about last time as well. So these formulas here are really the heart of all the calculations involving acids and bases. These guys here and these guys here. Any questions on those? So it does give you a variety of ways that you could kind of answer the same question. There's not necessarily a right way or a wrong way as long as you choose a legitimate way. They all should really get you to the same outcome and it's really just a preference which way you kind of want to attack the problem, what you want to calculate first, and again, should get you the same answer no matter which way you kind of do it. Any questions on any of those there? All right, let's try some of these then here. So let's try these two different problems. In one case, you got the H plus is 3.6 times 10 to the minus nine. And the second one, you have the OH minus is 9.2 times 10 to the minus two. Why don't we uh, do POH for this guy, PH? Why don't you also do the OH minus concentration? And is it acidic, basic, or neutral? For the second one, why don't you do the POH, the pH, and the H plus concentration, and is it acidic, basic, or neutral? So take a couple of minutes and think about those formulas we just did and try to calculate all those things for each of these solutions. Make sure our calculators work here. See how we're doing. So I rewrote up there on top pretty much all of our choices, and you do have a variety of different ways you can approach this. Since we're looking for pretty much everything in each of these questions, Let's start with the first one. The first one I have the H plus concentration and really you have two options. Uh, since you have the H plus concentration, you could go right into the pH equation. Uh, you could, if you want, use KW and get OH minus from that as well. So you have a couple sort of pathways you could choose. I'm gonna choose the pathway where I go into the pH. So that would be the first thing I would calculate because I'm given the H plus concentration. So pH tells me I could just use the H plus concentration and that will get you a minus the log of 3.6 times 10 to the minus nine. And if we do that uh, minus the log, again, that's negative, not the minus button, exponent button minus nine, gets us a pH of 8.44. Now that I have a pH of 8.44, what I could do is I could then use this relationship here to very quickly get my POH. And that means that the pH plus the POH is equal to 14. That means that the POH would be 14 minus the pH, which in this case would be 14 minus my 8.44. And I could subtract uh, 14 from that. It's gonna give me a 5.56 on my pOH. At this point, I have now finished both of these. Any questions on that there? Now, yeah. Sorry, quick question. Why are we using three significant figures? Uh, we're using it because the uh, concentration has actually two significant figures, this one. So the number of significant figures here is not how many significant figures, but how many decimal places in each of these. Oh, got it. Thank so you. Be two to two. Yeah, you're welcome. Other questions? Okay, so at this point, I need the OH minus, and we really, again, do have two options. Just like I could have done right at the beginning, I could have used KW and found it, or I could now use the POH to find it. So I'm gonna do the POH since that's kind of like a new calculation to us just to show you how to do it. So because I have the POH, I could take the OH minus would be the inverse log 
of the minus POH. That again is you would hit shift or second and log. And again, on most people's calculators, you'll put a 10 and a carrot up there. You then want to hit the negative button, not to subtract, but the negative button, and then type in your POH, which would be 5.56. And then you want to hit equals on that. So if you do that, minus 5.56. Looks like we get something like 2.8 times 10 to the minus six molar would be the units. And to answer sort of the same question that was just asked a second ago, going in the opposite direction, we had two significant, uh, two decimal places. That means our answer here when we do concentration should end up with two significant figures as well. Now, just like we talked about before, if you wanted to, you could do the KW to get that OH minus. Should come out the same, one times 10 to the minus 14 if you wanted to, divided by our 3.6 times 10 to the minus nine. And again, you should pretty much get the same number, maybe slightly different depending on rounding, but pretty much should hit you the same number. And it does 2.8 times 10 to the minus six. So again, you, you do have a couple different ways to solve these problems depending on the path you choose. And as you can see, they both should get you to the same spot no matter how you kind of choose to do it. Any question on any of those calculations so far? Kind of just following on the same question just so I have it down. So the, the pH and the pOH will have however many to the decimal places. And then the H plus and OH minus will be how many significant figures, correct? Yes. Yeah, so when you're going from when you're going from concentration to pH or pOH, so when you have the either the H plus concentration or the OH minus concentration, however many significant figures there are in that number is how many decimal places you should have. And then if you're going backwards from like the pH to the pOH to the concentration, however many decimal places in the pH or pOH is how many significant figures your concentration value should have. So yeah, so it works both ways as you go, obviously one way or the other. Other questions on that? All right, we still have one last thing to figure out, which is, is it acidic, basic, or neutral? Again, we wanna look only at the pH value. And the pH value here is above seven, which means that this solution is basic. You could also look at the H plus and OH minus, but again, this is much easier to figure out, which would be uh, from the pH. Question on any of those calculations there. Okay. Let's take a look at the next one and see how we did on that guy. So number two, again, we could kind of approach the same sort of way. You have a variety of ways you could get to the answers. It just sort of depends on which way you want to go. So in this particular case, I have the OH minus. So I, again, I'm going to choose to go with the POH first. Again, you could get the H plus if you wanted to, but I'm going to go with POH route first. And again, I'm choosing that because I have the OH minus given to me. So that's going to be minus the log of the OH minus. And that would be minus the log of 9.2 times 10 to the minus two. Again, negative button, log button, 9.2 exponent button, negative button, and two gives us a POH of 1.04. Again, uh, two significant figures, two decimal places. Now, which is usually the easiest move is because now that I have the POH, I could use this relationship just like I did above to very quickly get to the pH because the pH will basically be 14 minus the POH. And that's gonna give me 14 minus 1.04. And that will give me a pH of, uh, looks like 12.96. So you can see I got both of these numbers relatively quickly here. At this point, again, you have the option as to how you get your H plus. You could go back to the KW, just like we could have done at the very beginning. I'm gonna do the pH though, and do the 
inverse log of the minus pH, and that will give me my H plus concentration. Again, when you punch that in your calculator, the shift in the log should put a 10 and a carrot up. You hit the negative button, not to subtract, and the pH in there, 12.96 is what we want to go with. Uh, so if I do that there, I think on my calculator, it's looking like we will end up with 1.1 times 10 to the minus 13, and this would have molarity as the unit, and that would be our H plus concentration. At this point, we've calculated everything we need. We need to figure out one more time, is this acidic, basic, or neutral? So again, we want to look at the pH value, not the pOH value. So that is actually over here. And that is a 12.96, which means it is above 7 again. And this guy also would be basic. Any questions on any of those calculations? So again, really important to use that exponent button, really important to uh, push these things in correctly. And usually those are the one of two ways to do it. Display calculator exactly the way the formula is written, non-display calculator working backwards. Any questions on any of those things? All right, let's try a, a few more here, or a couple more at least, maybe, there we go. So why don't you give this one a go? The pH of the solution is 5.67. Uh, what is the pOH? And while we're at it, uh, why don't we do, what is the H plus concentration and the OH minus concentration? And is it acidic, basic, or neutral? So give that a go, see what you come up with. Look, um, again, since we're asked to kind of get everything here, multiple pathways. So for me, I'm just going to get the pOH first. And again, the pOH here is going to be the pH minus 14. And again, I could do that because I was given the pH. So that makes it fairly easy to do. Uh, I actually wrote that backwards. I'm sorry. That's actually 14 minus the pH that helps. Uh, 14 minus our pH value, which was 5.67. And that would get you uh, 14 minus 5.67. It's going to be an 8.33 on our pOH. At this point, we have the pH value and we have the pOH value. We could use both of those guys to get these concentrations. And to do that, for example, I will start with the H plus going to be the inverse log of the minus pH. So again, on your calculator, 10 and a carat, minus 5.67. And again, minus meaning negative and negative 5.67, giving us an H plus concentration here of 2.1 times 10 to the minus six molar. Do you need the concentration there? At this point, to get the OH minus concentration, we can use the pOH that we found, or because now we have the H plus, you could use KW as well at this point. So again, you do have a couple of options as to how to finish it up. I will stick with kind of the newer calculation here, the inverse log of the minus pOH, and that's gonna be 10 to the caret minus our negative 8.33. And that gets us, Punch in the number right there. There we go. Uh, looks like uh, 4.7 times 10 to the minus 9 molar. Again, in this case, we have two significant figures because each of the pH and pOH had two decimal places to get us there. And again, um, you know, if you want to do the KW calculation for OH minus, it would basically be one times 10 to the minus 14 divided by our 2.1 times 10 to the minus six will get you here as well. So again, that's your sort of other option. Any questions on any of those calculations there? Now we wanna know, is it acidic, basic or neutral? Again, it is the pH value we wanna look at and that is less than seven, which means it is acidic in this case. 
Any questions on any of those? Professor, when I typed in the uh, OH negative, the inverse log minus the POH, mm -hmm. I got, mine ended with a five. Well, mine's like five. Uh, the 4.7. Is, is yours in scientific notation with a five or, or is it just a bunch of zeros with a five at the end? It's a bunch of zeros with a five at the end. It's probably because your, calcul your calculator actually ran out of room on the display. Um, oh. so if it runs out of room, what we'll do is we'll round that last one and just put a five. If you actually change your calculator scientific notation, that's probably where the 4.7 came from. Um, if you didn't, it would be okay if you just counted the, the zeros and called it five times 10 to minus nine. But that sometimes happens if your uh, calculator is not in scientific notation. It's just kind of decimal form. If it kind of runs out of room, it will like zero out everybody in front of it. And that's kind of rounded to like one significant figure at the very end. And that's sort of where that number came from, why it looks like that. Oh, okay. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Other questions? Okay. Okay. Uh, so what was I going to say there? I'm not sure. Let's just continue on then and uh, take a look at another one here. So why this one, why don't we just do what it asks in this question? You have the pH is uh, 3.14. What is the H plus concentration? So see what you come up with. We can get that directly from the pH value. Again, inside the name, it tells us what we could kind of get from it. So it tells us two things when it says pH. pH tells us we can't, we need the H plus concentration to calculate the pH. The pH also tells us if we have the pH, we could get the H plus from it. So that's what we're going to do here. Like we just did on the previous problems, we're going to do our inverse log of our minus pH. That will give us again a 10 and a carat minus 3.14 and looks like uh, 7.2 to the minus four. And again, molarity should be written with it because it's a concentration. Here again, uh, two decimal places results in two, not decimal places, but significant figures when we go to the concentration question on that calculation. And for good practice, this is also going to be acidic as the pH is less than seven in this particular case. All right, one last one here, make sure everything's working. Let's just do what it asks as well on this one. So let's just get the OH minus concentration from the POH here. Okay, so again, as we've been doing, since we're given the POH, that OH part tells us we can directly calculate the OH minus from it. Uh, and again, exact same calculation we've been doing in this case is going to be the inverse log of your minus POH. So again, that's gonna be a 10 and a carat minus 5.67. And looks like uh, we're going to end up with 2.1 times 10 to the minus six molar. And that would be our uh, OH minus concentration. Any questions on that calculation there? Now, is the solution acidic, basic, or neutral? Again, you may look at this number and go, it's acidic, but that would be the wrong number to look at here. So we would want to figure out the pH, which would be 14 minus the pOH. If you wanted to figure out if it's acidic, basic, or neutral, this actually gives us a pH of 8.33. And because that 8.33 is above seven, this solution is actually basic. So again, important if you're not given the pH, if you're not sure what it is that you calculate it so that you actually can answer that question correctly. A lot of people would just write acidic because they see a number less than seven and that would be incorrect in this case. Any questions on that? Questions on pH, POH, H plus, OH minus concentration, how to calculate any of it. All right, so the last thing we're gonna kind of talk about in terms of pH and calculating pH and stuff like that is the idea that a lot of times up to this point in problems, we sort of been given like generic 
you know, H plus and OH minus concentrations, sort of these generic, hey, these are the concentrations. But what happens if we're given something that's like a real acid or a real base or something like that? So what happens if we were given something like HCl and uh, HCl is a strong acid as we talked about earlier on in this uh, chapter. And because it's a strong acid, what that means is it will 100% break apart into H plus and Cl minus. Now, if I wanted to calculate the pH for this acid, I need minus the log of the H plus concentration, which means I need a way to figure out, you know, what is the concentration of the H plus? Remember that this is a strong electrolyte, which means 100% of what you have in that solution is both the H plus and Cl minus. Let's say, for example, that the concentration of the HCl was 0.1 molar. What would be the concentration of the H plus? So we talked about this with solutions. It's a one to one relationship between those two, which means the concentration of the H plus would also be 0.1 molar. So that's actually what we need to calculate the pH. We would go into here and be minus the log of 0.1, and that's going to get us a pH of one in this case. And that would be the pH for this solution. So sometimes they're given, um, sometimes you're given actual formulas of strong acids or strong bases. For us in this class, we won't do any pHs of weak acids or weak bases because it's a much, much more uh, difficult calculation and beyond this class. Although in your textbook, this new textbook, she might talk a little bit about weak acids and bases in terms of uh, calculating them, but we're not gonna do any of those type of things. So if you're given an actual formula for an acid or base in this class, you could probably safely assume that it is a strong acid, which means you just really need to figure out what is the concentration of the H plus? And as long as it's a one-to-one -one relationship between the H plus and the whole formula, it will be always be the same number that we see here. So for example, if we look at another strong acid like 0 0.025 perchlorate, again, perchlorate being another strong acid, which means when it's in solution, it's going to 100% break apart into H plus and ClO4 minus. Again, this is 0 0.025 molar. We really need the H plus concentration here to calculate the pH. Again, we see it's a one to one relationship here, which means that the H plus concentration would be 0 0.025 molar. And that again is all we need to go into our uh, pH equation. And we will end up with a pH of 1.60, which is acidic in this case. Any questions on that there? Now, what happens if we have a, a strong base or something like that? Well, it works the same way. So for example, let's say we had 0 0.025 molar sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide, which is a strong base, will 100% break apart into sodium ion and hydroxide ion. And we'll just say for the sake of argument, it was 0 0.025 molar. What's important about the pH here is actually the OH minus. That is not going to allow us to get the pH directly, but that will get us to the POH and then to the pH. So again, it's a one-to-one -one relationship like we talked about with solutions, which means that our OH minus concentration is 0 0.025. That means our POH would be minus the log of 0 0.025. Again, here I'm calculating POH because I don't have the H plus, I have the OH minus concentration. So I cannot directly calculate that pH from that number. That gives us 1.60 as our pOH, which means then as we've been doing in the previous examples, we could subtract 14 from that. 
to get us to our pH, which would give us 12.40 pH. 12.40 is definitely above seven and it is basic, which is what we would expect here. Any questions on that? What happens if it doesn't break apart into a one-to-one -one relationship? Well, you do kind of the same thing. Let's just say we had calcium hydroxide. When calcium hydroxide breaks apart, you get one calcium ion plus two hydroxide ions. If this guy's concentration was 0 0.025 molar, again, we're assuming this is a strong base. The difference is this is a one to two relationship. So if you remember with concentrations, in order to adjust that, we need to multiply the concentration by two because it's not a one-to-one, -one. you get twice as much hydroxide in that solution. So two times 0 0.025 gives us a OH minus concentration of 0 0.05 molar, which would then go into our pOH. Again, we cannot calculate the pH from this because we are still only have the OH minus concentration. So we can only do pOH first. And that would get us minus the log of that, 1.30. Now that we have the pOH, we could do our subtracting of 14. And we will end up with 12.70, it looks like, as our pH in this case. So if you're given the actual formula of a strong acid or strong base, Essentially for the strong acids, you just need to figure out what the H plus concentration is and go into the pH equation. For the most part, it will be the same concentration as the whole thing. And if you have a strong base, you need to figure out what the hydroxide concentration is. Again, as long as it's a one-to-one -one relationship, it will be the same number. And you could go into the pOH and then into the pH. Any questions on how to calculate that? Okay. Last thing we're gonna talk about here in terms of acid and bases are buffers and what a buffer is and sort of how it works and what makes it work. First off, a buffered solution or a buffer is a solution that will resist changes in pH even if you add more acid or base to it. The important part about a buffer is, and misunderstood by a lot of people is a buffer, sometimes people say, well, it's obviously a neutral solution and that is, True, it can be. It could also be a basic and it could also be acidic. You could actually make a buffer at any pH you desire along the pH scale. So what a buffer really means is it is a solution that when you make it, it has a certain pH. So let's say we made a buffer at a pH of five. That would be an acidic buffer. And what it means is if I then decide to add some more acid to it, our base, when I add the acid or base to the buffer solution, it will be able to maintain a pH of five. Will it go up a little? Will it go down a little? It will. So if you add some acid, it should go down a little bit. So maybe it goes to like 4.9 or something like that. If you add some base, it should go up a little bit. Maybe it goes to 5.1 or something like that. But if you add some base to your buffer, it will not go from a pH of five all the way up to like a pH of 12 or something like that. Remember, as we just saw not too long ago, for every one pH unit that moves, that's like a power of 10 change in the concentration. That's a pretty big change. So when we get these really big jumps in pH, those are not buffer solutions. A buffer solution is one that's able to resist really large changes in pH. Again, is not necessary means it's a neutral solution. What is part of a buffer? A buffer is made up of one of two combinations, a weak acid and the salt is sometimes referred to of its conjugate base, or you can make a buffer out of a weak base and the salt of its conjugate acid. What are those two things? Those two things are our Bronsted-Lowry definition of like acid and base, as we talked about at the beginning and last time, conjugate acid and conjugate base. 
what are we talking about? An acid and a conjugate base partnership, 1H plus difference. A base and a conjugate acid, 1H plus difference. So in order for something to be a buffer, it has to be a difference of only 1H plus. You cannot have a buffer that is made up of a strong acid or a strong base. So why can we not make up a buffer of a strong acid and a strong base? Because something like hydrochloric acid, when it breaks apart, it breaks apart to H plus and Cl minus. That is a strong acid. In solution, this is pretty much the only thing you got going on there. This is our acid. This would be our conjugate base. So if you try to make a buffer of just from a hydrochloric acid, pretty much the only thing you would have floating around in there is the chloride part, just the base part. And that's not gonna allow a buffer to work really well. A weak acid or weak base is a weak electrolyte. So if you remember a weak electrolyte had those arrows that went in both directions and something like HF, for example, when that breaks apart is H plus and F minus. It produces a little of these guys in solution and it's mainly this guy which means when you make a buffer out of those two guys, you have some HF floating around in that solution, which is like an acid. You have some F minus floating around in that solution, which is like a conjugate base. So you have a acid part and a base part in the solution to begin with. And that is what really makes a buffer actually be able to work correctly. And you cannot achieve that if you're doing something that's a strong acid or strong base. It will not set up this equilibrium, which is what these two arrows basically represent. You basically got both things happening at the same time. So when we make a buffer, we essentially have to start with, if you think about a buffer, we have an acid part of the buffer and we have a base part of the buffer. And again, they're both in that solution, in that beaker to begin with. And that's really what allows it not to change pH. First off, any questions on what a buffer is made out of? All right, the better question is, how does it do that, right? So how is having both of those things in the solution at the same time help us basically maintain the pH? So let's first then talk about a a non-buffer solution and a non-buffer solution like water. So good old H2O is a non-buffer, it's not a buffer. And let's talk about what happens when we add acid to water. So if we take our hydrochloric acid, which is a strong acid, and we add it to water, right? So we basically add it to water. It's going to break apart into H plus and Cl minus. Okay. And basically in that solution, when it goes in for a swim with water, you are going to make a bunch of H plus freely floating around and some Cl minus floating around. So what did we just do here? What affects the pH of a solution? It is the minus the log of the H plus concentration. Well, 100% of what we would have in water, which is a non-buffer is H plus and Cl minus. So if we look at our solution, we just made a ton of free H plus, right? A bunch of those guys were produced very, very quickly. How does that affect the pH? Well, as we've been talking about, if my H plus concentration goes up, my OH minus concentration should go down and my pH then should go down as well. More H plus, more acidic, pH goes very far down. We get a big jump in pH here, down in pH. So let's just say, for example, we started at a pH of six. It goes maybe down to a pH of two, a very big jump in the pH because we produced a lot of free 
H plus ions very, very quickly. And that's really what affects the pH of the solution. Any questions on that there? All right, so what happens when we add a strong base to water, which again is not a buffer solution. So if we take to water a strong base, plus water, I guess that's plus plus water. So we add to water something like a strong base. I guess that strong acid is what I wanted to say up here. So we take something like sodium hydroxide and we put it into water. It also, because it's a strong base, 100% going to break apart into Na plus and OH minus. So let's take a look at what that would look like in our beaker. In this solution, we have a bunch of Na pluses and we made a bunch of OH minuses free floating in that solution. Why is that a problem? Well, for the same reason as above, what we just did is we just made a bunch of free OH minuses, which on the outset may not seem like a big deal, but because the OH minus concentration goes up in this case a lot, it is tied to the H plus concentration and it will go down a lot. And what that means for the pH is it will go up a lot. And we would see a big jump in pH here. And again, I'm just making up these numbers, but maybe we start at six and we jump to like a pH of 11. A very big jump in pH. Why did we get a big jump in pH? Because we had a lot of free OH minus produced very quickly. And again, it's that balance of H plus and OH minus that really keeps the pH where it's at. If you kind of add a bunch of those guys, either one or the other, it's going to cause the pH to jump very much because either in the top case, when we added an acid, we produced a lot of H plus very quickly, going to bring our pH down a lot. Or in the case of the bottom, we added a base, it's going to bring our OH minus up a lot and their pH up a lot because of that. Any questions on what happens in a non-buffer situation? Okay, so let's talk about now how a buffer is able to handle this addition of acid or base. We're going to look at what happens when we add the exact same acid and base, but now to a buffer. There's many different buffers you could choose. You know, there's like acetic acid, which is a very common one and sodium acetate. And you may not think that these guys are related to each other, but acetic acid is this guy. And sodium acetate is really acetate. And again, the difference between these two is one H plus. The sodium is really not doing anything other than just hanging out basically. This is really the acid part of our buffer. This is the base part of our buffer. And, you know, you could have something like HF, which is a weak acid and like sodium fluoride, which is a conjugate base. Again, here, the buffer part is the HF and the F minus. Again, this being the acid and the base relationship between these two things. Again, here, the sodium not doing any. So let's add that hydrochloric acid to one of these buffers. Why not? Let's go with the common one that everybody uses. We'll use the acetic acid one here. All right, so if I take that exact same acid that I added earlier, which was my hydrochloric acid, this is a strong acid, which means when it goes into my buffer, which by the way, at the beginning here, we have some acetic acid floating around. We have some acetate floating around. We got some sodium floating around, but really not doing much. Uh, but we have both of these guys in solution to begin with. Again, this is our buffer solution to start with. And again, the acetic acid is the acid part of the buffer. The sodium acetate or the acetate is the base part of the buffer. When I react the hydrochloric acid and dump the HCl into here, 
the HCl, which is an acid, will actually react with the base part of the buffer, and we will get an acid-base reaction that will occur. So we will get the reaction between the sodium acetate. And this is basically a double displacement reaction, an acid-base reaction, like we talked about before. Positive guys are gonna switch partners. When they do, they will form acetic acid and sodium chloride in that double displacement reaction like we talked about in that reaction chapter. So this is the reaction that will happen when we add this to the buffer. Now, why does the pH not jump? So let's take a look at a couple of things that we produced as a result of this reaction. Well, first off, we produced acetic acid, which was in the buffer to begin with. So clearly that is not going to mess up the pH. And that always happens. You actually produce one part of the buffer as you use up some of the other buffer. The other thing that we produced is sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is actually a neutral salt. This is neutral. It will not mess up the pH. But more importantly, in terms of this reaction, is actually something that we do not see here. That we did see when we added the hydrochloric acid to water. When we added the hydrochloric acid to water, we produced a bunch of H pluses, if you remember, right? All over the place. This case, when we produced this reaction, we did not produce any free H pluses. Were not produced. So as a result of this, you know, we got some sodium and chloride floating around, but absolutely no H pluses were produced in that solution. Why is that important? It's important because the concentration of H plus remains relatively constant because we did not produce any more. Obviously, as you can see, none produced here. And if the H plus con concentration remains relatively constant, that would mean that the pH will remain relatively constant because basically the amount of H plus that we started with is still the amount of H plus that we have at this point. So because of that presence of that sodium acetate in this case, it was able to sort of gobble up all that free H plus that normally would find itself in the solution like it did in water, but is no longer free here. It's actually tied up right about there with the acetic acid. And because it's tied up, that means the overall H plus concentration that's in the solution remains relatively constant to where it began with. And that is how it keeps the pH relatively constant because the H plus concentration didn't go crazy, the pH didn't go crazy. Any questions on that? Now, <clears throat> will the pH actually change? The answer is yes. It will go down a little bit, to be honest with you. If you were monitoring the pH with like a pH meter, again, maybe you started at a pH of 4.7, Maybe it goes down to a pH of 4.5, 4.6, but it will not do a giant jump in pH. It will just go down a little bit. Any questions on what happens when we add a acid to a buffer? So let's talk about the opposite reaction, which is what happens when we add a base to the same buffer. So we'll use our same buffer here, which is acetic acid and sodium acetate. Again, same deal. This is again our acid part of the buffer. That's our base part of the buffer, just like in the previous one. They are both really floating around in that solution. You got some of this guy. You got some sodium ions. In reality, you got a little bit of H plus in there to begin with from the acetic acid. Um, but you know what's going to happen in this case when we add our sodium hydroxide. Our sodium hydroxide is a strong base. And when we react it and throw the sodium hydroxide in here, it is going to react with the acid part of the buffer. So we will again get a acid-base reaction that's going to occur. 
also going to be a double displacement reaction, positive, negative, negative, positive, positive guys swap places makes a sodium acetate and water. So what happened here? We see the exact same thing as we saw earlier. We produce some sodium acetate, which was part of the solution to begin with, part of the buffer to begin with. So it will not affect the pH. We also produce water, which will not affect the pH. But much like above, what we do not see here is any free OH minus, like we did see when we added the base to the water. We produced a ton of free OH minus in that solution. Here, we did not produce any free OH minus in that solution. Why is that important? That's important because if the OH minus concentration is relatively constant, because the OH minus concentration and the H plus concentration are tied to each other, that means that the H plus concentration will remain relatively constant because of that. You know, whatever H plus was in there to begin with will stay in there. Again, because those guys are tied to each other, if we keep the OH minus constant, H plus is going to be relatively constant. And because the H plus is relatively constant, the pH will remain relatively constant as well. Will you see a, a movement in pH? You will a little bit up because we added base. Maybe it goes from a pH of 4.7 to 4.9 or something like that, but it will not go from 4.7 all the way up to like a pH of 12 in this case. So how does a buffer really work? A buffer really works because it has both a acid part and a base part that's in that solution to begin with. When you add additional acid or additional base to it, it's able to prevent free H plus from forming when you add an acid, keeping our pH constant. It's able to prevent free OH minus from forming by basically uh, keeping our H plus concentration constant at that point and our pH. Where does the OH minus end up? It ends up right here in water. So where the OH minus ends up in this case is actually where it actually ends up. So it prevents that formation of free H plus, free OH minus. They both are what causes those big jumps in pH when we're not dealing with a buffered solution. Question on that. So just graphically here to finish, I know we're, oh, what's there? So what happens with, again, if we have a buffer, and again, we have the acid part of the buffer, we have the base part of the buffer. When we add acid to it, what always happens is we will use up some of the base part of the buffer, but as we saw there, we'll exaggerate it here and make more of the acid part is made. And when we add base to it, it will use up some of the acid part and make more of the base part in a very badly drawn scale here. I'm not sure why it got so much bigger, but we'll do it this way. Acid part of the buffer. And that's why a buffer can maintain pH over a long period of time because you know, as you use up a little bit of the buffer, you're making a little bit more of the other. So it's able to maintain that. Can you blow through a buffer? You absolutely can. If you just keep adding acid, at some point you're gonna keep adding, keep adding, keep adding, and eventually all the base part will go away. At that point, it no longer will be a buffer. You'll see this really big jump in pH and uh, it obviously will jump the pH, but a well-made buffer is able to maintain its pH over a good period of time because again, it has both of those things, a weak acid and its conjugate base or the salt of its conjugate base, or it's a weak base and the salt of its conjugate acid. And again, both are there to begin with. That's what allows it to ultimately tie up any free H plus coming in from an acid, tie up any free OH minus coming in from a base. And because both of those things keep the, P, the H plus concentration 
relatively constant, it keeps the pH also relatively constant as well. And again, in order for these things to be a buffer, they got to at least be weak and a 1H plus difference. Just like we talked about with Bronsted, Lowry, acid and bases. Any questions on how a buffer works? All right, that is essentially this chapter. That is, I think, pretty much it. So I know we only have a little bit.